today, we're going to be testing 35 macOS games on the new 15-inch MacBook Air, powered by the Apple M2 chipset. Pause the video now for the specs of my machine. Our first game to look at is Elix 2 by Piranha Bytes and THQ. Elix 2 is a science fantasy RPG and is coming to Mac very soon. THQ has provided me with a test flight build of the game so you can see the performance on this new Mac. Elix 2 offers players a vibrant open world to explore featuring five major factions each with their own captivating story arc for players to engage with and experience. Elix 2 stands as one of the pioneering titles to fully embrace the GPU-driven pipeline with indirect command buffer approach on Mac and is also among the select few games that have shaders specifically optimized for the metal shading language. The game supports Metal 2.4 and Metal Effects Upscaling via the Temporal Variable. On this MacBook Air, it's best to play the game at 1080p, medium settings with Metal Effects on quality. In quality mode, the game is upscaled from 1645 by 925. It hangs around 30 FPS on this machine. This is one of the most demanding native Mac games yet. In the past, it would not have even been possible to think of this game running on an Intel MacBook Air, but here it is up and running and it shows the power of Apple Silicon. Up next, we have No Man's Sky by Hello Games. No Man's Sky is a game about exploration and survival in an infinite procedurally generated universe. According to Hello Games, on Mac, it has been built from the ground up with a new rendering pipeline to take full advantage of Metal 3 and Metal FX spatial and temporal upscaling. Here is the game running at 1080p, high settings, with Metal Effects on temporal and balanced mode. Being on balanced means the resolution is upscaled from 1136 by 639. The FPS is typically quite a bit over 60 FPS, which I think is great. It can drop below 60 FPS though during some challenging scenes, such as exploring lush planets or when engaging in massive space battles. I also enjoy playing this game at 1440p or 2K, ultra settings with metal effects on temporal and quality mode. Being on quality means the resolution is upscaled from 1712 by 963 to 1080p to 1440p. The game sees about 30 FPS here, which some may not enjoy, but in this state you can appreciate the impressive details of the worlds on offer. The most disappointing aspect of this Mac port is the absence of HDR, which would have looked lovely on the 15 inch liquid retina display here. Experience true survival horror like never before on Mac with Resident Evil Village by Capcom. RE8 on Mac supports Metal 3 and Metal FX upscaling and HDR. I think it uses the temporal solution for quality mode and spatial for performance mode under Metal FX settings. So I prefer to play this game at 1080p balanced with Metal FX on quality. In this state, the FPS is around 60 with some minor dips during challenging scenes especially with big outdoor areas. 1440p or 2K is possible here, but you'll have to accept 30 FPS. I've got the game on prioritize graphics and metal effects is still on quality. RE8 is perfectly playable at 30 FPS. So this might be a good way to experience the awesome graphics on offer in this one. Layers of Fear 2023 is a first-person psychedelic horror game developed by Blooper Team and Anchner Studios. This is the definitive way to experience the critically acclaimed franchise as it features Layers of Fear and Layers of Fear 2, as well as all downloadable content and the never-before story 
of the writer. It's the first Unreal Engine 5 game running on Unreal Engine 5.1.1 in particular. It supports Metal 3 and Metal FX upscaling. Similar to RE8, I believe it uses temporal upscaling for quality mode and spatial for performance. It also supports HDR, which looks great for this horror experience. For any Apple M2 based Mac, Blooper recommends 1080p high settings with metal effects on quality. Being on quality means the resolution is upscaled from 1344 by 756 to 1080p. This will provide about 30 FPS. The game will have frame pacing issues in some scenes though, it's unavoidable, especially when loading an in-game cutscene. If you prefer a higher FPS, drop down to medium settings. Now you'll get anywhere from 45 to 70 FPS. Some challenging scenes such as monster encounters are where the FPS will drop the most. Gameloft has never been known to port games to Mac. So Disney Dreamlight Valley was a welcome surprise last year, especially with the fact that it had Metal 3 support minus Metal FX. Disney Dreamlight Valley is a hybrid between a life sim and an adventure game, rich with quests, exploration, and engaging activities featuring Disney and Pixar friends, both old and new. Here, I'm playing at 1440p, very high, and it's about 60 FPS on average. In some scenes, it can go above 60 FPS too, a little. I have not unlocked many areas in this game yet, so the FPS may be different if you're further along in the story. It's not a very demanding game, so this great performance should not be a surprise. Experience true combat gameplay in a massive military sandbox. Bohemia Interactive have just partnered with Virtual Programming to port Armor 3 to Mac as an experimental build. It runs under version 2.12 in Armor 3 and has cross-play compatibility and full DLC availability. I want to make it very clear, there is a non-native version, but also an even more experimental native Mac port available. Keep in mind, the native port does not support BattleEye anti-cheat, so multiplayer is more restricted. This is what I'm showing in this video. This is a, a, just some random like campaign level way of fighting people. I don't really know what to do in this game, if I'm honest. Anyway, at 1080p high, it sees about 50 to 60 FPS, which, which I think is not bad for, for an experimental build. But really, the game requires 60 FPS or over consistently, so medium settings made this possible for me at 1080p. I know this is quite an old game, but Armor 3 is still very popular to this day, and I'm really excited that it's now on Mac. Baldur's Gate 3 is a story-rich, party-based RPG set in the universe of Dungeons & Dragons, where your choices shape a tale of fellowship and betrayal, survival and sacrifice, and the lure of absolute power. On Mac, the game supports Metal 2.1, AMD FSR 1.0, and HDR. It will finally be coming out of early access in August for PC, console, and Mac on the same day, which is really cool. The Mac developer, El Varels, told me they are looking into supporting Metal Effects upscaling in the future, but can't confirm it at this stage. On this machine, El Varels recommend 1080p high with AMD FSR switch to quality. Being on quality means the resolution is upscaled from 1280 by 720 to 1080p. The average FPS is about 30 here, but it can go a bit higher in some scenes. Keep in mind, the game requires 10 GB of RAM on macOS, which means it will not run well on a MacBook Air with only 8 GB of RAM. There is no confirmation yet if this will change for the official release in August. Metro Exodus is known for its epic storyline and demanding visuals. It also supports Metal 2.2 and Molten VK. At 1080p, 
high, it sees about 30 fps, but can go quite a bit higher in some circumstances. This is honestly quite okay, because 30 fps for this game is completely playable. It's quite a slow paced shooter. I also tried the game at 1080p, medium settings, but the performance wasn't that much better, so you may as well just go with high. One of the biggest disappointments with this Mac port is the absence of HDR in settings. This game really would have looked good with HDR. This game was optimized for Apple Silicon by 4A and Apple. That being said, it does run under Rosetta. Still, I would consider this good performance overall for such an intensive title on an entry level MacBook Air. Here we have Warhammer 3 by Feral Interactive. With support for Metal 2.4 and AMD FSR 1.0, Warhammer 3 is one of the most demanding games to try on Apple Silicon. Yes, it runs under Rosetta, but Feral have specifically optimized the game for the Apple Silicon architecture. Anyway, since this game is absolutely massive, you can't expect miracles here on this MacBook Air with M2. I found it was best to play at 1080p, medium, with AMD FSR enabled, and a screen scaling of 79%. This means the resolution is upscaled from 1516 by 853 up to 1080p. The average FPS is 39.7 in battle, and 29.5 FPS in campaign on my MacBook Air. Shadow of the Tomb Raider remains the best AAA action adventure on Mac. I really, really want more games of this caliber on our platform, but we'll have to wait and see. Regardless, at least it's a wonderful game and it's still good to this day, even though it's quite old now. It supports Metal 2.2, contrast, adaptive sharpening, and HDR on Mac. At 1080p high, the game sees 33 FPS on average. I also tried the game at 1080p medium, but the FPS only jumps up just a little bit, so it's not really worth it. In my opinion, I think 1080p high is the best way to experience the AAA graphics on offer in this one. 30 FPS is playable for this game. X-Plane 12 is a flight simulator with real-world physics, accurate aircraft systems, and an immersive simulation of the world. It's definitely the best flight simulator on Mac right now, and it makes me very sad that no one ever shows this game in their tests when playing games on Apple Silicon. Why does everyone, everyone avoid this game? It supports Metal 2, AMD FSR 1.0, and HDR on Mac. Keep in mind, this game is officially supported on Apple Silicon Macs with 16 gigabyte or more of memory. So if you have a 15 inch MacBook Air with only eight gigabyte of memory, you may have performance issues. I found on my M2 MacBook Air, which has 16 gig of memory, it's best to play at 1080p, high with AMD FSR on balanced. Being on balanced means the resolution is upscaled from 1280 by 720 to 1080p. In this state, you'll only be getting 30 FPS. I know, I know, but this is a big game. So much is on screen at once at any given moment. I think it's quite impressive that it's actually this playable here, I, I, really, I really do. Travel 2000 years into the past and relive the final days of a cursed Roman city where if one person sins, everyone dies. It's actually really cool this game. And it's surprising because not many people even know it's on Mac, but here it is. The Forgotten City is arguably one of the worst Mac ports though, which is sad as it's native on Apple Silicon and has been ported over by virtual programming. And it uses Unreal Engine 4.26. It has it all going for it to be a good port, but it sees the same performance on every single Apple Silicon Mac from M2 Ultra all the way down to M1. I'm not even joking. It's terrible. This is so bad, this game, in terms of optimization. No matter the resolution or graphical setting, it only achieves anywhere from like 10 to 40 FPS. It's really disappointing as this is a wonderful, absolutely great adventure game and was originally based on a mod for Skyrim and now it's his own game. It's really cool. 
combining quirky missions and mysterious conspiracies, Psychonauts 2 is a platform adventure game with cinematic style and tons of customizable psychic powers. It runs under Unreal Engine 4.26. I was hoping this one would perform a little better here than 1080p medium with about 50 to a little over 60 FPS sometimes. Perhaps if it wasn't running under Rosetta 2 it would see better results. I guess at the end of the day it's not awful as this game still looks pretty good at medium settings I would say. Like there isn't that much difference between medium and high here. War Mongols is an isometric real-time tactics game which takes place on the Eastern Front of World War II. Originally developed by Destructive Creations, it was ported to Mac by Virtual Programming. It supports Metal 2.1, Unreal Engine 4.27 and AMD FSR 1.0. Despite the fact that the game has a, a very stupid 30 FPS cap enabled on every Mac in the background, it's actually pretty well optimized here. I'm, I'm going to give it some props. For example, I'm playing it native 1440p or 2k with no need for AMD FSR. And the FPS is typically 30. I just think that's actually pretty good. I just hope in the future the developer can disable the 30 FPS limit. I just don't understand why it's there. What, why, why can't we play above that? Firmament is a new puzzle adventure game by the legendary game studio behind games like Mist and Riven, classic puzzle games. Similar to the 2021 remake of Mist, Firmament runs under Metal 2.1, supports Unreal Engine 4.27+, plus, supports HDR, and AMD FSR 1.0. How does the game fare at 1080p high with AMD FSR on balanced? Being on balanced means the resolution is upscaled from 1280 by 720 to 1080p. It struggles a lot in some worlds, going down to 30 FPS. Cyan need to fix this. Whereas in some locations it will go up to and sometimes over 60 FPS. If I was you right now, I'd put the settings to medium with AMD FSR on performance for around 60 FPS and sometimes over. Being on performance, however, means the game is upscaled from 960 by 540, but this was the only way to get the game to run at this high frame rate on this machine. Keep in mind, this game often uses over 8 gigabyte of memory, so you might have performance issues on, let's say, an 8 gigabyte 15 inch MacBook Air model. Fight for survival in a post-apocalyptic zombie open world in Dying Light from Techland. This AAA game is old now, so it's no surprise it works great here. But also Metal 2 support will help. It used to run on OpenGL. It sees 1080p high with typically over 60 FPS. Awesome. Just be warned, this game isn't officially supported on Apple Silicon or new versions of macOS. Sometimes when you launch into the story, the game will freeze on a black screen. The only way around this I found is by just force quitting the game and retrying over and over until you successfully load into the campaign. Also make sure you are playing the game at 60 hertz. This game doesn't like playing at above that. Now for World of Warcraft. I don't really like this game. In fact, I really don't like it, so I'll keep this short. At 1080p max graphics, it sees about 30 to 50 FPS. At 1080p high graphics, it now receives about 60 to 80 FPS. If you want over 100 FPS, play at medium settings. I have a strong reason to believe that WoW has been updated for Metal 3, as the OS requirement has been raised for macOS Monterey and Ventura. That is pure speculation though. Unlike the original Life is Strange, the follow-up game is considerably more demanding. With Unreal Engine support, it has improved lip-syncing, facial animations, and improved terrains to explore and see during cutscenes. At 1080p high, it sees anywhere from 30 to 60 FPS. At 1080p medium, it sees anywhere from 45 to 60 plus FPS. 
everyone loves to see Minecraft. As most of you know by now, I keep saying it. As of mid-2022, Minecraft is officially native on Apple Silicon. With popular mods installed through Fabric Loader such as Sodium, Iris Shaders, and FBS Display, you can play at 1080p resolution. Fancy settings with anywhere from 300 to over 500 FPS. Amazing. Several shaders work too. I'm using Silda's Vibrant Shaders High. This completely revamps the lighting and adds advanced effects like volumetric lighting, bloom, ambient occlusion, and reflections. You can play at 1080p. Fancy graphics with 40 to 60 FPS. Not bad. Enjoy an original looter shooter packed with bazillions of guns and a mayhem fueled adventure. Blast through worlds and enemies as one of four vault hunters. For a freaking MacBook Air, Borderlands 3 has great performance. 1080p medium with 36.81 FPS on average. Not bad, I, I say, but when you think about it, it gets similar performance on higher Apple Silicon chips, even a Mac Studio. It's not a very well optimized game in general. I think it might even run on Metal 1, and it still runs under Rosetta 2, obviously. But look, you can definitely get by here. Keep in mind, this game often uses over 8GB of memory, so you might have performance issues on the 8GB 15 inch MacBook Air model. In 2023, The Sims 4 became native on Apple Silicon. Yes, this game is quite old. That being said, it's still one of the most popular life sims out there. A lot of people still play this game. It runs super well here. I'm playing at 1440p or 2K Ultra, and it gets anywhere from 60 to over 100 FPS. Fantastic. Now, obviously, I'm not that into this game. I'm more of a Sims 2 person, so the results may vary for you. This is just a brief look into what you can do here. Mankind Divided was one of the first games to support Metal 2.0 on Mac, and it was one of Feral's first games to support Metal in general. You would have never, ever, ever, ever expected this game to be even playable on an Intel MacBook Air, but here it is, up and running. At 1080p medium, it sees 38.7 FPS, which is really not bad for a game of this caliber. At 1080p high, it now sees 32.5 FPS. In my opinion, just play at high settings, as I think the game should be experienced with better visuals over frame rates. Just my opinion though. Disco Elysium was one of the first biggish games to run natively on Mac. It's not a very demanding game though, it does run under Unity. But, it's seriously a huge RPG experience. You can get so much out of this game. You're a detective with a unique skill system at your disposal and a whole city to carve your path across. It plays great here at 1440p high with typically over 60 FPS. I'm really bad at this game. I'm so sorry. Take these results lightly, okay? Here's CSGO. Firstly, let's have a look at what I believe is the most common resolution for pro players in CSGO. 960p at an aspect ratio of 4x3 in low settings. The FPS is around 150 to 300. This is a pretty high FPS to the average gamer, but I imagine some pro players will laugh at this. <laughs> really, you'll be saying? <laughs> what? Really? Don't forget the game is running under OpenGL, folks, which isn't officially supported on Mac anymore. Anyway, at 1080p low, we're now seeing 150 to 200 FPS. This is another common resolution, so you can be happy knowing you can get by at this res. You can also try 1080p high, but we'll be seeing about 60 to 90 FPS, so it's up to you. Aspire Media is yet to update Civ 6 to run natively on Apple Silicon. I don't know why they're not doing this, but they're, they're idiots. This is like one of the most popular games on Mac. Anyway, 
I use the in-game benchmark tool. I tried 1080p medium and it showed 16.959 ms in graphics and a turn time of 10.67 in AI. For 1080p high, it was 26.543 milliseconds and a turn time of 12.02. I also find this game utterly boring, so use these results as a loose example. Unlike Civ 6, this 4x strategy game is native on Apple Silicon. It's, it's also quite a demanding Unity game as well. At 1080p beautiful, it's hovering around 30 FPS. Meh. Or at 1080p simple, it's about 49 to 55 FPS, a bit better. Keep in mind, this game often uses over 8GB of memory, so you might have performance issues on the 8GB 15-inch MacBook Air model. LOL now supports the Metal API. By default, you don't have to enable it anymore outside of the game, which is really handy, and the performance is great. Anyway, at 1080p, very high, we are seeing over 200 FPS. Whoa! Or at 4K, it's well over 100 FPS. I think these results are uh, pretty good. I'm playing offline though against bots because this game is... Ugh. NBA 2K23 Arcade Edition is the latest title in the NBA 2K franchise. Obviously though, this is the arcade version, so the graphics are are not on par with the PC and console version, but it, 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 it's pretty close in some regards, maybe. It also runs on Metal 2.3. The game has a max resolution of 1080p, bizarre, but it can reach 120 FPS on my machine. It might even go above this if you have a higher refresh rate monitor. Sky Children of the Light is available on the App Store through the iPad version. Unlike most of these games, it supports a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and has full mouse and keyboard support and controller support. It also runs on Metal 2.3. When you play the game, you have a few different graphical modes to try. High performance mode runs the game at a lower resolution to achieve 60 FPS and then it upscales to your native res. On my machine, it's running at 1736 by 976 and then upscale to 2160p or 4k. Or you can play in high def mode and the game targets your native resolution, in this case 4k, but the FPS is capped to 30 and the frame pacing is terrible. I hope in the future that game company can allow for more advanced graphical settings on Mac so we can, you know, manually choose the resolution and graphical options. I think this machine could do native 4K at 60 FPS quite easily. Gloomhaven is a tactical RPG and a digital adaptation of the ultimate strategy board game by Isaac Childress. Is that how you say his name? Child, Childers or Childers, I don't know how to say that name. Unlike most new Mac ports, these days, this one unfortunately runs under Rosetta 2. It still runs okay though. I didn't play this game for that long though, I'm so sorry. But at 1080p, good settings, we're seeing 30 to 50 FPS. I found that no matter this, the graphical settings, the FPS kind of stayed the same though. Aspire have finally fixed Black Ops 3 multiplayer on Mac. You can play online, again in multiplayer and zombies. Keep in mind, it's still not cross-play, so you can only play against other Mac users. This means there is hardly anyone playing this game on Mac. Good luck finding a game. I found a, a few online sessions, but they either didn't have enough players to start a multiplayer game or no one would ready up in zombies. I was waiting for like 15 minutes for this guy to ready up, but no. So, for this test, I'm showing offline multiplayer against bots. Anyway, for the best performance on this 15-inch MacBook Air, I suggest playing at 1080p medium, and then put the render resolution to 80%. 
This means the resolution is upscaled from 1536 by 864 to 1080p. This will allow for a little over 60 FPS frequently, which is what you want with a COD game or an FPS. In early 2022, the Pathless, an Unreal Engine 4 game, was updated for Metal 2.2 and runs natively on Apple Silicon. While the performance is much, much better on more powerful M series chips, you can still enjoy the game on weaker chips with better frame pacing now. For example, I'm playing at 1080p high and it hangs around 30 FPS, but you won't see as many dips or frame pacing issues as I said. The Mac version of the Pathless is on another level to the mobile version graphically. It's closer to the PS5 version, as you can manually change the resolution and graphical settings. See Rapture through the eyes of Subject Delta, a fearsome Big Daddy prototype returning to the ruined undersea city to rescue his missing little sister, Eleanor. While this game is technically remastered, it's not much different to the original release, so it can run extremely well on low-end Macs. Here I can play at 1440p high with anywhere from 60 to well over 100 FPS, which is great for a first-person shooter. Somewhat recently, Unknown Worlds have added metal support to Subnautica Below Zero, so it runs incredibly well on the new M2 MacBook Air, even if it's probably only Metal 1. At 1080p medium settings, I'm seeing about typically over 60 FPS. In the past, it only received 30 FPS at 1080p medium on an M1 MacBook Air. So this is quite a big improvement, folks, and you can't be happy knowing that you can play this game here oh, well. Um, yeah, and then be scared of all these random fish things that keep attacking me. Our last game to look at is the number one farming simulation game by Giant Software. While I understand Farming Simulator 2022 might not be for everyone, it's a very demanding PC game with impressive realistic graphics and effects. It's also native here and runs under Metal 2.1. At 1080p medium, we're seeing anywhere from 40 to 60 FPS. The only thing is that the game has bad frame pacing when you initially launch the game and start playing and it can last for quite a long time like 10 minutes or so. What do you think of the gaming performance offered by the new 15 inch MacBook Air with Apple M2? Are you impressed or disappointed? Will you buy this machine? Do you already own it? Do you own an older Apple Silicon MacBook Air or an Intel MacBook Air? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. For an entry level Mac I think the performance here is actually pretty good, especially for a device with no fan. You would have never seen these results on the last Intel MacBook Air. The large Retina display looks great for games too, especially ones with HDR support. Anyway, leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date with Mac gaming news. My name is Stewie and thanks for watching.